quick now, come find me, Mountshroud's voice laughing called them on. This way, no, this, this. They ran along the slender ribbon of mummy wrapping deep into the earth. Yes, here I am. They turned a corner and stopped, for the long linen ribbon wound across the tomb floor and up a wall to wrap around the feet of an ancient brown mummy, which was propped atill in a candlelit niche. Is, stuttered Ralph Benstrom, dressed in his own mummy costume. Is, is that a real mummy? Yes, dust sifted from under the golden mask on the mummy's face. Real. Mr. Mountshroud? You? The gold mask fell to clang like a bright bell on the floor where the mask had been. It was a mummy's face, a pool of brown mud crinkled by blasts of sun. One eye was glued shut with spiderweb. The other eye cracked forth tears of dust and a, bright gl and a glint of bright blue glass. Is there some boy there dressed like a mummy? asked the voice muffled beneath the shroud. Why me, sir, squeaked Ralph, showing his arms, legs, chest, and medical bandages that it had taken him all afternoon to wrap himself up in, mummified. Good, sighed Mount Shroud. Grab the linen strip and pull. Ralph bent, took hold of the ancient mummy bandages, and yanked. The ribbon unraveled up around, up around, to reveal the great ancient reptile nose beak and flaky chin and dry smile, dust, powdery mouth of Mount Shroud. His crossed arms fell loose. Thanks, lad. Free. No fun being wrapped like some old funeral gift for the land of the dead. But, hiss, shh, quick, boys. Hop into the niches. Stand stiff. Someone's coming. Play mummies, boys. Play dead. The boys leapt to stand, arms folded, eyes shut, breaths held like a frieze of small mummies cut in the ancient rock. Easy, whispered Mount Shroud. Here comes... A funeral procession. An army of mourners in gold and fine silks bearing small sailing ship toys and copper bowls of food in their hands. And in their midst, a mummy case carried light of sunshine on the shoulders of six men, and behind that, a fresh wrapped mummy with new paintings on its linen vestments and a small gold mask fitted over the hidden face. See the food, boys, the toys, whispered Mountshroud. They put toys in the tombs, lads, so the gods will come play, romp, rest about, and run children happy to the land of the dead. See the boats, kites, jump ropes, toy knives. But look at the size of that mummy, said Ralph, inside his hot linen bandages. It's a twelve-year-old boy in there, like me. And that gold mask on the boy mummy's face, doesn't it look familiar? Pipkin, cried everyone hoarsely. Shh! hissed Mount Shroud, for the funeral had stopped. The high priests were glancing around through the flickering torch shadows. The boys, high in their niches, squeezed their eyes tight, sucked in their breaths. Not a whisper, said Mount Shroud, a mosquito in Tom's ear, not a murmur. The boys yammered and yelled. In the dark, they could hear the scrape and slosh of mortar filling the last cracks and seams. The final stones were shoved into place. The mourners went away with their silent harps. Ralph stood in his mummy costume, stunned, watching the last shadows go. Is that why I'm dressed like a mummy? He fingered the bandages. He touched his clay-wrinkled ancient face. Is that what my part of Halloween is all about? All, boy, all, m murmured Mount Shroud. The Egyptians, why, they built to last. Ten thousand years they planned for tombs, boys, tombs. Graves, mummies, bones, death, death. Death was at the very heart, gizzard, light, soul, and body of their life. Tombs and more tombs of secret passages, so none might be found. So grave, robber, grave robbers could not borrow souls and toys and gold. You are a mummy boy, because that was how they dressed for eternity. Spun upon a cocoon of threads, they hoped to come forth like lovely butterflies in some far, dear, loving world. Know your cocoon, boy. Touch the strange stuff. Why, said Ralph, the mummy, blinking at the smoky walls and old hieroglyphics. Every day was Halloween to them. Every day gasped all in admiration. 
every day was Halloween for them too, Mom Shroud pointed. The boys turned. A kind of green electric storm simmered in the tomb dungeon. The ground shattered as with an ancient earthquake. Somewhere a volcano turned over in its sleep, lighting the walls with one fiery shoulder. And on the walls beyond were prehistoric drawings of cavemen long before the Egyptians. Now, said Mount Shroud, lightning struck. Saber-toothed tigers caught with the cavemen screaming. Tar pits drown their bones. They sank, wailing. Wait, let's save a few with fire. Mound shroud blinked. Lightning struck to burn forests. One ape man, running, seized a burning branch and rammed it in the saber tooth's jaw. The tiger shrieked and fell away. The ape man, snorting in triumph, tossed a fiery branch into a pile of autumn leaves in his cave. Other men came to hold their hands out to the fire, laughing at the night where the yellow beast's eyes waited, afraid. Sea boy's mound shroud's face flickered with fire. The days of the long cold are done. Because of this one brave, new-thinking man, summer lives in the winter cave. But, said Tom, What's that got to do with Halloween? Do? Why blast my bones? Everything. When you and your friends die every day, there's no time to think of death, is there? Only time to run. But when you stop running at long last, he touched the walls. The ape men froze in mid-flight. Now you have time to think of where you came from, where you're going, and fire lights the way, boys, fire and lightning, morning stars to gaze at, fire in your own cave to protect you. Only by night fires was the caveman, beastman, able to last, to turn his thoughts on a spit and base them with wonder. The sun died in the sky, winter came on like a great white beast shaking its fur, burying him. Would spring ever come back to the world? Would the sun be reborn next year or stay murdered? Egyptians asked it, cavemen asked it a million years before, will the sun rise tomorrow morning? And that's how Halloween began? With such long thoughts at night, boys, and always at the center of it, fire, the sun, the sun dying down the cold sky forever. How that must have scared early men, yeah? That was the big death. If the sun went away forever, then what? So in the middle of autumn, everything dying, ape men turned in their sleep, remembered their own dead of last year. Ghosts called in their heads, memories, that's what ghosts are. But ape men didn't know that. Behind their eyelids, late nights, the memory ghosts called, waved, danced. So ape men woke up, tossed twigs on the fire, shivered, wept. They could drive away wolves, but not memories, not ghosts. So they held tight to their ribs, praying for spring watched the fire, thanked invisible gods for harvests of fruit and nuts. Halloween indeed, a million years ago in a cave in autumn with ghosts inside heads and the sun lost. Mound Shroud's voice faded. He unraveled another yard or two of mummy wrappings, draped them over his arm grandly and said, more to see, come on boys and they walked out of the catacombs into the twilight of the old Egyptian day. A great pyramid lay before them waiting. Last one to the top, said Mound Shroud, is a monkey's uncle, and the monkey's uncle was Tom.